In this video, I will rank every single survivor from worst to best according to the perks that they bring to the table. So you can also use this ranking to find out which survivors you need to buy as soon as possible and which you can basically skip for eternity. Let's start with place number 36. Now let's go! And the survivor with the worst perk setup in all of the Badet is Jane Romero. She has head on, solidarity, and poised. Head on only works properly as a two stack. And Solidarity and Poised are utterly trash. So trash, in fact, but I don't even know what they do. And this is a problem. <laughs> I mean, the last place for Jane, therefore, is obviously deserved. Although, she has an Exhaustion perk, which should rank her higher. But, yet again, it's Head-On. And Head-On is the weakest Exhaustion perk by far. So, yeah, sorry for you. The newest addition to the game finds herself in place number 35. It's Talita Lira. She has friendly competition, cut loose, and teamwork power of two. Talita has a very hard time making good use out of her perks, in my opinion. Friendly competition, although it's very liked by me, is not worth an honest looker, and the same also goes for the horrible teamwork perk power of two. Cut loose, on the other hand, can be of some use, especially mid chase. It can definitely make a difference against almost any killer, but it's still heavily outclassed by quick and quiet, in my opinion, and therefore Talita finds herself in place number 35. The quietest survivor finds himself in place number 34, it's Ace Vis Conti. He brings to the table Ace in the hole, open handed, and up the ante. Not putting Ace on the dead last spot feels a bit like a crime. The perks that Ace brings to the table are all very situational and overall not very good. Up the ante is only good in self under builds with slippery meat and Ace in the hole only works on its limits when you commit yourself to a lot of chest opening in a game or if you really want to keep an add-on on your item and are willing to give up an entire perks of it which you also could do with an offering. With a friend of mine starting out playing DVD just some days ago, I found some decent value in open handed because I could easily control her pathing a lot during that time and therefore I had to give a some praise for it and therefore I wasn't able to put it in place number 36 but in place number 34. Place number 33 goes to my main Yoshi Azakawa. Yo, she, yo. I just need to say this because otherwise you say Yuichi and you make it wrong. It's Yo Chi. I get you guys to say it, I promise. He brings to the table parental guidance, empathic connection, and boondock theory. And by the way, this here is also the answer to the question of how I can place Yoshi without getting Rosa by all of you guys. If this wasn't biased, I genuinely would have had a conversation to put him dead last. Parental Guidance is pretty okay when combined with the size of Strike, for example. Dark Fury can immediately hit the bin as it probably belongs in the bottom 5 of all perks in the game. The only positive from his perk setup comes from Empathic Connection in my opinion, as it's a decent perk that not only provides your mates with information, but also makes sure that they are healed at all times. Yoshi, sorry to put you on place number 33, but your perk setup really gave me no other choice. Place number 32 is Shao Mason, she brings to the table Soul God Repressed Alliance and Blood Pact. And to cut this here short, Blood Pack is utterly trash, Repressor Alliance only rarely if ever is from noticeable effect and Soul Guard is highly situational but definitely serves its purpose. Shell overall is a survivor that I don't really enjoy at all and therefore I think that place 32 is as high as it gets. And next up we have Ash, Flip Flop, Mellow Man and Buckle Up are the perks that he brings to the table. Buckle Up can go into the bin directly, trash perk that can't be saved anymore. Flip Flop is a decent choice but yet again only works well in specific builds and requires you to get slucked in order to be somewhat useful and Mellow of Man despite the rice that it had for me requires too much to activate. You need to get 3 protection hits in order to prevent one freaking down? Not worth it at all. Ash number 31. The top 30 is kicked off with Detective Tab, Stakeout Tenacity and Detective's Hunch are his perks. Tab in my opinion is a bit of a wild card. Other players would probably rank him way higher than me, but let's get through my decision. Detective's Hunch is a decent information perk, but I feel like it's not worth an entire perk slot. I mean, you can basically just pick up a map. Stakeout is only good when you play something like Hyperfocus alongside and Tenacity has exactly the same problem as Flip Flop. Only situational use and you are almost forced to play flip flop and boil over alongside to get use out of it. Top 30 for tap. One place higher than detective tap is LED. Power struggle, deception and appraisal are her perks. And the problem with LED is that she is a one trick pony. 
This is literally what I get out of her when I look at her perks. Power Struggle is decent but only works once per game and also then it requires a build or some insane luck. Deception is okay but nothing else and Appraisal, yeah it exists. I mean, you can rummage through chests once more, like, why would you want to do that? <laughs> it's the nicest thing I can actually say about her really. So. This place is kind of deserved. On our place number 28, we have Junjin. She has Smash Hit, Fast Strike, and Self Preservation. Fast Strike and Smash Hit make Junjin seem like a good survivor, but she really isn't. Smash Hit is rarely of good use, and Fast Strike only works once to twice per game at max level. Self Preservation, on the other hand, has the same problem as Poise from Jane. What in the freaking hell does this perk even do? I mean, tell a lie in the comments and spread it to confuse them all. Just go out of your way, make it a new dad out if you want to. Up to your choice. Released alongside Dredge, now in our place number 27, we have Hattie. She has residual manifest, overzealous and inner focus in her arsenal. He goes roughly the same as Yoshi. How high can I place her without making you guys angry? And 27 seems like the highest it gets. Residual manifest inflicts the blindness status effect for 30 seconds after blindness occurred and I personally think that this is just awesome. I paired it with Blast Mine the past recent weeks and just had so much fun with it. I still love Gen Rushing and therefore it's no surprise that there won't ever come a negative word out of my mouth about Overzealous. And in a focus is so unimportant but I don't even know what it does. Yet again, lie in the comments. In our place number 26 we have Jill Valentine. She has Blast Mine, Resurgence and Counterforce in her arsenal. Let's welcome our second one trick pony into the list. Blastman is nice, but also not the best perk on this earth. It's a meme perk, and that's why it's so heavily enjoyed among survivors. But the blind and the 5 to 6 second time waste for the killer are in theory not worth committing to. The surgeon saves 50% of a heal after a hook, which is okay, but not extremely necessary, even with the new healing update. And counterforce is also okay, but only affordable when you're on a totem cleansing mission. And now we'll make a lot of you guys angry in our place number 25, we have Leon. He brings to the table Flashbang, Bite the Bullet, and Rookie Spirit, which we can bin directly. It's just utterly trash. Bite the bullet in itself is pretty okay, being silent while performing any kind of feeling action is definitely a thing that needs to be looked at, at least it's decent. But then comes flashbang, and as I said in the beginning, this is will most likely make a lot of you angry, which I somewhat understand. Flashbang is an okay perk, but a good flashlight in my opinion is far better. Both of them do roughly the same with the only difference being that the flashlight is always ready and flashbang isn't. Also, flashbang is a perk and flashlight is an item which also makes a big, big difference. Sorry, if I've upset any of you, well, let's face it, I'm not really sorry, am I? <laughs> and to round out the Resident Evil 3 stack, place number 24 goes to Ada. Wiretap, Renekta Feeling and Low Profile belong to her arsenal. The only good thing coming from Ada's perk set is Wiretap, and if paired with a Pest Alliance for example, you can get a very long chase going and easily hold the killer distance. Yes, it needs a bit of luck, better gen is right in jungle gym, but still very decent. Renekta Feeling and Low Profile, however, are both perks for the trash can. React the feeling is just utterly bad and in my opinion should almost never be run by any player that is playing this game seriously and low profile is only important in the last stages of the match and only if you're on the losing end. And on top of that, I do think there are better perks. Left behind, clairvoyance, I do think that they are far better than low profile. Place 24, Ada. Place number 23 goes to the knight's nemesis, Vittorio. Bugwise, potential energy and quick gamut are his perks. I feel like Vittorio is done a bit dirty here. Fogwise is low-key one of the best information perks in the game, but for some reason I can't ignore the fact that it's only rarely seen and further also not picked very much, peaking at 1.64%, which is mad. The reason why Vittorio is above Ada is potential energy. It can solve free gen situations and generally speaking isn't a bad perk to bring into a trial. Quick Gambit is horrendously bad and never, ever gets any good value. And if this perk was deleted from the game, I wouldn't complain about it one bit. Next up we have Quentin with Witcher, Wake Up and Pharmacy. Now we're coming into the range of survivors that are pretty much interchangeable. Quentin makes place number 22 for me. 
All perks of him are solid. Vigil is absolutely underrated, but a 30% faster exhaustion recovery is not to be underestimated. Wake Up helps you to open and locate executors faster, which is pretty nice, and Pharmacy is also heavily underrated. I mean, you get a safe feel with it if you really think about it. However, and this is totally true, Pharmacy loses a lot value when you play survival friends or if many aura perks are run. With that being said, peaking at place number 22 is Quentin Smith. Missing out on the top 20 is Felix in our place number 21, Build to Last, Desperate Measures and Visionary are his perks. Build to Last belongs to one of my favorite perks. I've mentioned it enough by this point, but I like gen rushing and Build to Last can restore your uber toolbox two times completely if you go into a locker three times. More gen rushing for me, more love for Build to Last. Desperate Measures is a decent perk, increasing healing and unhooking action by 40% per injured person is pretty okay. Visionary lets you see gen auras, and I don't really need to say why this perk won't ever make it, especially when Deja Vu exists, which you also let's see gen auras and gives you a 5% speed increase for those gens. With that being said, outside of our top 20 is Felix Richter. Kicking off the top 20 is Nancy with self-aware inner healing and better together. Inner healing is an awesome perk for solo queue you can reliably heal yourself. I think it's absolutely underappreciated, although it's a general perk due to a non-existent Stranger Things license. Self-aware is a perk that alone standing already makes some good sense, but if you then think about one of the best perks, arguably THE best exhaustion perk in the game, Spin Burst, it's just even more insane. And better together is just okay. But, well, nothing else. I think that the 20th spot for Nancy is absolutely more than deserved. Arguably, she could even go and battle for the top 10. In our place number 19, we have the second Stranger Things character in Steve. Kinship, Renewal and Guardian are in his perk arsenal. I do think both of the Stranger Things characters definitely belong here. Renewal is good, being able to heal yourself in the trade of being broken is totally okay and actually quite nice. Guardian is a niche perk which doesn't get the credit it truly deserves and Kinship somewhat falls into the same category. If you look how popular a meta reassurance is, it's quite mind-boggling that Kinship doesn't get the same praise. I hope I did this perk some justice and Steve can be more than happy with place number 19. And next up in our place number 18 is Jesus. Jesus has distortion, breakdown and aftercare in his arsenal and he is banged down in the middle. Breakdown is a perk that destroys hooks for 3 minutes after being unhooked. It's quite acceptable to run it, but it's highly situational and therefore only ready if ever find some good use. The true and hidden MVP of this perk set is definitely Aftercare. Aftercare is such an awesome information perk but never ever has gotten the credit it truly deserves and it is the sole reason why Jeff is beating out the likes as Vittorio or Quentin here. Because he has two awesome perks in my opinion, and not only one. Distortion is just insanely good, especially in solo queue, and there is nothing else to add. Jesus takes place 18. Kicking off the better half of this tier list is Yui. Any means necessary breakout and lucky break are her perks. By the way, do you know the answer to survivors having no scratch marks? Lucky break. It is always lucky break. Okay, back in the day when I started out playing the game, one of my friends told me that lucky break exists. And I was like so blown away by this perk that I thought when I started out playing killer that every person that I didn't see scratch marks for was playing Lucky Break. Okay, in the end, her teacher builds are all pretty decent. As is covered, Lucky Break is an awesome niche perk that promotes stealthiness. Breakout once in close proximity to a carried survivor helps that survivor to free themselves from the killer scraps quicker. And last but not least, anyways, this is just the best troll and fun perk that exists in the game. And also, it is the best perk on the game. With Blastmine, of course, because Blastmine is just fun. Let's face it, Yui is a deserved place 17. In our place number 16, we have Otstava. Boon Exponential Overcome and Corrective Action are his perks. One week ago, I saw someone running Corrective Action. And my reaction was completely crazy as I screamed almost enjoying the fact that I've met someone seriously playing this perk. And also because it prevented me blowing up again, but that's completely beside the point there. Overcome is a very decent perk as well as Exponential, both definitely have their value and are worth running. I put odds higher, I really would put him higher, but the perk usage rates are not really giving me a reason to do so. With that being said, sweet 16 for Otsudaba himself. Place number 15 goes to Lori, and she's the highest ranked one trick pony of them all. Decisive is number everyone and is utterly strong, doesn't need an introduction. 
And yeah, let us not talk about the other two perks. Let me just say it in this manner. Trash, trash, and utterly trash. And let me say it again, just because I can. Utterly trash. Thank you very much for listening. Next up, we have our beloved Red Hat in Michaela. Boon Circle of Healing, Boon Shadow Step, and Clairvoyance are her perks. Even after the very prominent Circle of Healing nerf that will happen very soon, I don't think that Michaela is in a bad spot overall. Although Circle of Healing will definitely not be a top 5 use perk anymore, I still think that will have its place somewhere around the top 10 to 50 mark, which is just fine. Shadow Step is a perk which is very good on some maps, but hugely disappointing on others, and Clairvoyance is the best hatch tracking perk that exists in the game. Overall, I would say that the 14th place may be ambitious, but it's possible to defend if you find yourself in a discussion about it. So that takes place number 13. Self-care, botany knowledge and empathy are in her arsenal. Will I get slaughtered for putting her at place 13? I don't really know, actually. Botany knowledge and empathy are good perks. They have a very good synergy and arguably the best synergy from teachables in the entire game. Self-care, on the other hand, though, is a crime against humanity. The perk is bad. Don't run it. I absolutely freaking back you. Nonetheless, I can't really put her any higher than this. On the other side, I can't really put her any lower. And the perk synergy from botany knowledge and empathy make her a deserved 13th place. Let me your opinion down below in the comments. Next up, we have Jake, Iron Will, Saboteur, and Calm Spirit are in his teachable perk set. You know what surprises me? That Calm Spirit has a usage rate of 0.7%. So 0 point set why? I think it's one of the worst perks in the entire game. Nevertheless though, Saboteur is quite good, but sadly you can use a Saboteur box as well and even be more efficient than with this teachable. Jake's perk I will on the other side is one of the strongest perks in game. Yes, it got heavily slandered by the community after its infamous nerf, but I still think that it's very, very strong. Due to the fact that Iron Will doesn't work when it, with an exhaustion perk anymore, as it completely negates its effect when you're exhausted, you probably are forced to forbid yourself from playing an exhaustion perk. I know that I will have some fire against me when it comes to Jake's placement, because I many people will argue that he belongs lower, but I do think that Saboteur and Iron Will are actually very, very decent perks, are worth the effort, and make Jake a deserved place number 12. Missing out on our top 10, sadly, is Rebecca. Reassurance, hyperfocus, better than new are her teachables. Reassurance belongs to one of the best perks in that by daylight right in this moment. Although the pick rate of it is relatively low, it still needs to be viewed exactly in this high regard. Hyperfocus is an awesome gen rushing perk and especially if you're paired with Stakeout, you can do some disgusting things with it. The last perk out of the three called better than new just exists. It's not really good or noteworthy in my opinion, but it's still niche and therefore definitely worth a slot if you really want to go out of your way. All in all, Rebecca is missing out on the top 10, but I still think that she deserves this 11th place for sure. If you've gotten so far in this video, this is your lucky day. Answer me the question, which is your favorite perk in the game? Hashtag it with the letters G and A. And after that, you enter a giveaway for a DLC of your choice. Good luck. Drawing date is in three days. And kicking off our top 10 is Renato. Background player, Blood Rush and Collective Stealth are in his arsenal. Ah, oh, Renato, what are you doing with us? A top 10 position might be surprising, but I think it's absolutely justified. Let's face it, not for collective stealth, that's absolutely for sure, but Blood Rush and especially background player definitely belong to my favorite perks right in this moment. You could argue that I'm a bit biased here, but man, how couldn't I be? Renato deserves to be in the top 10. Next up, we have Neo with Balanced Landing, Urban Evasion and Streetwise in her pocket. Do you feel the same when you see someone crouching with urban evasion? Do you feel the same? I feel absolutely everything but signs of enjoyment. To be completely honest, I actually want to throw my goddamn computer out of my window and just call it a fucking day. But fair enough, the perk is useful in some situations and shouldn't be made a laughing stock. Balanced landing is a decent and good exhaustion perk and streetwise, you know, I'm a weird gen rushing enthusiast, it's just bloody awesome. Place number 9 goes to Nia. Place number 8 goes to David, Dead Heart, No Miver, and We're Gonna Live Forever in his perk Arsenal. Bit of that nerf will hurt David, that's a fact. Will it hurt him much though? 
I don't really think so. That art will still be played, not as much, yes, but it will still hurt when it goes through and for the price of one unhook or being unhooked once, I think it's more than just fair. No Miver is a meme perk and that's that. And We're Gonna Live Forever is pretty decent but not worth really thinking about. In the end, I feel like 8 plates is more than enough for David. And yes, I do it solely because of that art. And especially because I think that that art is more than in a well enough and good place. Next up, we have Zarina. For the people of the record and Red Herring. Let's actually take care of Red Herring. It's trash. The diversion perk and there's nothing else to add. For the people, serves a situational purpose, sometimes can be very clutch and definitely is worth running. Off the record, one of the strongest perks in game, especially for anti-tunneling scenarios. With that being said, play 7 for Zarina. Missing out on the top 5 is Adam with Deliverance, Autodidact and Diversion. I do feel like Autodidact could be the perk when the healing update drops as it was intended in the PTB. If it doesn't, I still think that Adam is in a very good spot and definitely deserves that placement right here. Deliverance is S tier. Unhooking yourself is awesome and such a game breaker in an endgame scenario. And Diversion is just fun to use. Not very useful, yeah, but just so funny. All in all, I don't think that the 6th play for Adam is out of proportion by any means. And inside our top 5, let's welcome her, it's Kate. Windows of Opportunity, Bolo and Dance With Me are her teachables. The sole reason for Kate being this far up is obviously Windows of Opportunity. It's the most used perk to date and with the changes coming to the game, nothing about this will change in any meaningful way. It's an awesome info perk and there's nothing to add. Boil Over is decent and good in some builds and Dance With Me is just alright but simply nothing else. The top 5 is truly deserved for Kate, however I can easily accept some of you putting her towards the bottom of the list. And place number 4 is Bill. He runs Unbreakable, Borrow Time and Left Behind. Place number 4 and place number 3 however are pretty much interchangeable. Why did I decide to put Bill on place number 4 then? The third perk is the answer. I don't see a valid reason on why you should run left behind as there are countless other and better alternatives such as Hatch offerings for example. Unbreakable and BT on the other hand are still extremely strong perks but definitely deserve their place far up this list. Mr. Overbeck therefore is one of the best choices to prestige and level early on as both teachables are adding so much more to the table. All in all, Bill's fourth place is more than deserved. Place number 3 goes to Dwight with Proof Thyself, Bond and Leader. Dwight takes the bronze medal and this is absolutely deserved. Proof Thyself is meta and the most prominent perk for getting gents down in the current state of the game. Bond is arguably the best information perk for flashlight users or those who are willing to learn it. Such as me for example. And Leader is good. Niche, but Good, and for sure better than Left Behind and that's the sole reason for Dwight beating Bill by one place and therefore making the podium places. Well done. And drumroll please for our place number 2, it is Fang with Life Alert and Technician. The silver medal goes to Fang and it's not even close. Immediately Technician is for the bin, Alert on the other side is totally unappreciated, underused and underloved by so many people. If you haven't tried Alert once, make sure to load up your next game with it equipped. I promise you, it'll change your life. Life is... Life. Wow, I just really wrote the script, huh? It'll change your life. Life is life. Perk that in my opinion is the best exhaustion perk in the entire game. It's called life because life is life. This is my script, ladies and gentlemen. Jesus Christ. And place number one, the best survivor to level up early on and to prestige is Mac with Sprint Burst, Adrenaline and Quick and Quiet. Last but not least is Mag and her teachable set is truly unique. Quick and Quiet is a decent perk, yet again very niche but still very okay. Adrenaline and Sprint Burst don't really need an introduction because both are matter and this for quite some time now and nothing, absolutely nothing seems to be stopping them from doing so. Mag has not only the highest perk user trait but also the best perk set in the game and therefore is the best survivor in that by daylight. And this concludes this video. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let me know down below in the comments. And also, don't forget the hashtag GA. And if you don't know what it means, well, 
watch the video in its entirety again. And finally, please get lost. <laughs>